you're obviously working with a with a good secondaries coach and, and coach Happley. Um, just start off. Um, what have you immediately learned from him in, in your first you know interactions with him about the position? Uh, maybe stuff that you even that you've been able to, to discuss with him in, in terms of just the, the position itself. Well, first and foremost, I just want to thank you guys for having me. You know, uh, this is this is a new this is a new chapter in in my development, and I'm just really happy to be here. Uh, I would say off the field, I've been more impressed with uh, Coach Halfley, just how he is as a person. How, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy, he's a very humble individual who, who is not, although he's an extremely great DB coach, he has not just forced all of his beliefs and his coaching upon some of my reliefs. I think he respects me as a coach and, and wants to get input. Uh, he's, a, he's a really a servant leader who, uh, who really puts others before himself. Uh, so, but selfishly, I'm, I'm I'm probably in the greatest situation a DB coach can be in. You know, I always felt like I want to grow as a coach, uh, and it's and it's important to me to be around guys that are like-minded, but you know, just on a different level that I have been as a defensive back coach. So I'd be a fool not to listen, and I think I ask him more than he than he kind of pushes on myself. So it, it's been a great experience so far. Coach, uh, when you get the guys together, can you kind of do you have an antenna? Can you kind of pick up who the leaders are, and do you kind of kind of gravitate to them a little bit to start forging your relationships? As far as the secondary, yeah, uh, I, I I think first it's more about just what class they are in, or, or the experience of them playing on the field. I think those guys kind of push themselves to the front. Uh, so uh, obviously, uh, Mike Palmer, I, I would say, is if we had a leader of the, of the secondary, he would be that guy. He's a fifth-year senior who who kind of rallies the guys. Uh, he's 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 really you really see him a lot on uh, on our group text. So you you see him speaking up, telling, making sure guys are doing the right thing. So I would say he, he would be our our leader so far. It's really early in the process. Uh, you know, we didn't we didn't just jump on the field with those guys. Uh, we were on the road recruiting a lot of January, and then we were off a little bit in February. So, really, we've only been back with those guys probably for two or three weeks. So, it's actually it's a learning experience right now. So, you know, I'm not pushing leadership on anyone. Let's talk about the athleticism of the quarterbacks you're going to see in this league. They're almost all dual threat, buy time for their for their receivers. Just talk about the challenges you're facing with the kind of quarterbacks you'll be seeing in this league. Well, I'm still getting familiar, you know, with with this conference. I, I've never coached in this conference, so I'm not, you know, totally, you know, experienced in what those quarterbacks but obviously, you know, when you when you're dealing with quarterbacks that can run all pass, it's a different dynamic, which affects not only the secondary, but it affects all positions and it affects, you know, this uh, entire scheme of a defense. Uh, at the end of the day, we want to be a defense that that is tough and smart, that play that plays, you know, the game the right way and uh, discipline and detail is going to be a trademark. So in, in the back end, it's more eye discipline with, with a quarterback that can run or pass. You can't just decide to just go for a run or, or have your eyes just on your man. So it'll be details and discipline oriented. That was one of the things that kind of those Maryland secondaries were sort of notorious for was just causing a lot of trouble, <laughs> like turning the ball over. Yeah, you can't turn over. How do you, how do you sort of – what was important to you in terms of ingraining that sort of mentality? Mm -hmm. I think uh, you have to stress turnovers. You know, it's a big component in, in being a great defense. You know, if you can turn the ball over, you have a high probability of winning that football game. So it needs to be stressed every day. Uh, we'll do a lot of turnover circuit drills. Uh, we'll be uh, there'll be a lot of rewards for getting turnovers in practice and all types. You know, and and you want your uh, the entire defense to celebrate those those takeaways in practice. And it has to be it has to be an important part of it. And the other thing is just a mindset of uh, getting guys to react to the ball, getting their head around faster, being able to finish. It was a big part of what BC did last year, especially early in the year, just kind of incentivizing, you know, turnovers, like you said, the turnover mm -hmm. circuit early. But uh, is it, when you, in your, in your first glance, did you see whether it was guys like Brandon Sebastian and Nolan Richardson, guys who kind of wanted to find it or keep their nose around? Well, I, I really can't speak for, for, for that right now because we have not practiced. Uh, in, uh, but I will say this, these, these kids have been awesome. You know, whatever have we, we have, you know, stressed or asked about, they've been willing, you know, and that's all you can ask for is just for them to be willing for a little change and willing for them to be successful. And also, we were talking to Frank and Tim, you know, Jack too, but, um, they have NFL experience and then you have, like, the Alabama experience. And there's, like, this uh, a lot of elite football level experience. But they said it all, that it's interesting because it translates at all levels, whether it's college or high school or you know, how much. The, the experience. What, what, what are the unique things you learned from those experiences that you can kind of bring with you? Uh, 
Well, obviously, I'm still learning, still growing. Uh, just from the Alabama, the Alabama experience, it's just understand that just to be process oriented, to really keep your head down and really win that particular day. That's one of the biggest things. Uh, I never seen uh, Coach Saban really celebrate. You know, he's always looking for, you know, the the what in things and and really just trying to push for more and more and, and greater things. So he's really it was a saying, "Be where your feet are," and I, I think that's important where it really just maximize the moment of what you're doing at that particular time. Jason Jackson was one of the guys, right? It was. Ring and say, like, all right, how big of a coat do I need for New England? <laughs> <laughs> he's actually going to be on campus a lot more. You know, he's not that far. And, yeah, uh, J.C. was, was – I, I coached him for two years at Maryland. Really proud of him. Uh, and I, I selfishly, I kind of knew he was going to be he was going to be a pretty good player in the pros. I think he he, he was a perfect match for uh, New England Patriots. You know that defensive uh, scheme. So a little bit about cover one, just in terms of one, what you're able to teach, mm -hmm. and how much, how does this is that experience separate from coaching that program kind of make you a better teacher? Well, well, cover one was a defensive back, uh, you know, training. Uh, regimen. Uh, it was. It was. It was. It was more of a mentoring program for young men uh, at all ages. Uh, it started in the D.C. area with myself and my father. Uh, we just started. I mean, my father is. is when you, if you ever guys get to meet him, I mean, he just loves DB and secondary. I mean, everywhere I've been, he's come on the sidelines and just started coaching, <laughs> coaching the DBs while I'm coaching. So it, you'll you'll see him. I can guarantee you, you'll be able to spot him. Uh, but uh, I've never seen anyone who just loves secondary like like my father did. And uh, we just started giving back to young men in in, in the neighborhood, and it, and it and it grew. And all of a sudden, there was NFL guys who, who were coming to train. Uh, in that area, in in the D.C. area, uh, and uh, it, we haven't we haven't really really uh, been a cover one. It hasn't really been around since you know I've been in college because you can't train high school guys anymore. But it was it was a great experience. My father still trains. My father still trains guys. But uh, it was a great experience on and off the field. Uh, taught me a lot about how to how to coach defensive backs. It is a difference between. DB training and getting defensive backs to play an actual game. You know, I, I really feel like you can't do the drills that you do, you know, during the season that you, that you that you would do in college. So it is a difference, but it's been it's been great for me. Uh, it really gave me a lot of notoriety in the area with defensive backs, which I still I'm still able to use with just recruiting, you know, defensive backs. And you you tie that in with Coach Halfley's experience and Coach Tim's experience. Like I, I, I truly believe it's a no brainer situation for elite defensive backs to really be a part of the B C family. When you talk about or talk about a guy like JC Jackson and, and some of the guys that you've seen uh, through your career, um, what makes the the type of defensive back that you look for unique and, and what, how does that apply necessarily to the position that, that helps them get to the next level? All right, so I, I, I just tr I truly feel defensive backs, uh, if, if, if you're talking about high school, it, it's about uh, position versatility. You know, when you're talking about safeties or nickels, the, the position has, has, has become so diverse that it's difficult to find a certain skill set in every type. Uh, what I probably will, as a pro, a corner, I have no-brainer, uh, you know, critical factors. And speed is extremely important in the ACC. So that's a critical factor. The other thing is competitiveness and toughness. So those three things, I think, are, are, are non-negotiables for corner. Uh, safeties are different. You know, we obviously play uh, a, a different type of system where you, you have down safeties, you know, kind of box safeties, and then you need a middle-of-the-field safety guy who, who has to be more athletic, you know, has to have an edge about him and has to have toughness, but understand angles angles and being instinctive. So it's different different parts. You may find uh, some, some characteristics in all these guys, and you have to make a conscious decision. But it's more about you can't just get all corners. You can't just get all safeties. You know, you, I look at it as a basketball team. So essentially I want some point guards, I want some twos, and I, and I want some long threes you know, that could possibly play a boundary corner or a box safety. I don't want any fours, don't want any fives. <laughs> so it is like basketball. Yeah, so, so you know, you, you want versatility, you know. But I, like I said, you want them all to be tough. You want them all to be competitive. And a lot of times you can't see that competitive on, on, uh, on tape. So you got to do more than just watch tape. You got to go out and do your diligence, find out, you know, find out their, uh, their home, you know, and, and, and things of that nature.